you guys welcome back to my channel any of you eyeshadow lovers out there will be very excited about today's video we have a few eyeshadow palettes to take a look at i recently placed a long overdue order from bh cosmetics for a couple of their palettes that i have had my eye on for quite a while so we're going to be looking at these palettes in detail today i ended up getting five of them but i'm very excited about it, it should be a lot of fun for those of you that are new to my channel i want to give a special welcome to you i hope that you enjoy this video if you do i hope that you'll give it a thumbs up and make sure that you are subscribed before you leave. And now we do have a lot of palettes to look at, so let's jump right in. All right, guys, so here's how this video is going to go. As you can see, I don't have any eye makeup on, so we will be doing an eye makeup look with one or two of these palettes. Not quite sure what direction I wanna go yet, but we will do that towards the end. First, we are gonna go through each of the palettes individually, take a look at some swatches, look at the color stories. I will talk about their prices and also mention the price that I got these palettes at because BH Cosmetics, if you are not aware, is a brand that runs sales quite often and the sales vary depending on the sale that you happen to catch. So sometimes their palettes will be 20% off, so Sometimes they will be 60% off. Sometimes you can even find a palette for a wild 70 to 80% off. So if you are like me and you like a good deal, I would highly recommend getting on their email list so that you know when their sales are going on because they have quite a few sales off and on throughout the year. So I ended up ordering five of the palettes in this size. Some of them are kind of more of a travel or location theme. Some of them are food themed. I got the avocado toast palette, the blueberry muffin palette, the chillin' in Chicago palette, the hangin' in Hawaii palette, and lastly, the Smitten in Switzerland palette. So I decided the best way to do this would be to go through these just alphabetically. I have had these palettes for a few weeks now. I have used all of the palettes. I haven't used every shade in each one of the palettes, but I have used them enough to kind of get a good feel for formulas and color stories and what I like most or what I don't like about each of these palettes, which we will kind of get into as the video goes on. And I do just want to say so far formulas across the board, I'm wildly impressed with. Really the only thing I really have to criticize with any of these, and I don't even know that I would call them criticisms per se, but they really just have to do with the colors or color stories in each of the palettes, which we'll get into as we go through these individually. So we're going to start off with the Avocado Toast palette. This one, if you guys have been watching me for a while, if you watch all of my videos, you will know many months ago, I think it was last summer or fall, I had this on my wish list. I cannot believe it has taken me a year to pick this up. I'd intended to order this palette during their winter sale or their Christmas sale. Ended up holding off because of all the other things that happened to be buying around that time of year, but I'm very excited to have it now. Here's a closer look at this palette, the outside and the inside, and then here is a look at the shadow swatched on my arm. This is a very, very pretty one. It's a fun one. It is very colorful. So if you are into neutrals and neutrals only, you probably would not like a lot of the shades inside here or get a lot of use out of a lot of the shades inside here. I'll be honest and say as much as I am inspired by this color story, I think it's a fun one. There are a lot of shades in here that I probably wouldn't reach for on a daily basis. I think these bold greens are fun, but I'm not very likely to wear them when I'm running errands or just in my regular everyday life. So just keep that in mind looking at this color story. And if you don't like some fun color in your life, maybe one of these these other palettes that we'll get into in a minute would be a little bit more suited for you but I do think this is a fun one very happy to see it includes a couple of basic lid shades you get good range from light to dark in here you get some staple neutrals you don't get a lot of neutral transition shades the two transition shades that they include in here this light pink and this light yellow well I think they're really fun I don't think they're overly bold they're not neutral so they are especially when combined with some of the more bold colors going to add to a more colorful look this is a palette that I'm likely to use when I'm just wanting to be creative and fun and do something colorful. I do really love this green right here. It is so so good. It actually reminds me a little bit of one of my favorite greens from Sydney Grace. It also reminds me a little bit of one of the matte greens inside the Mandalorian palette which I absolutely love that palette. I also really love this red brown right here. This is one that I love and I think it pairs really well with all the other shades inside here. You also get more of a charcoaly I wouldn't call this a black, I'd call it a blackened brown, but it goes really well if you're wanting to stick with a little bit more of a cool toned look or if you're wanting to add liner to maybe some of these green shades, I think that one would go really nicely. I love this matte rose in here. I think these teal greens are really fun. Sorry, I'm running out of finger space. Let me just swatch these live for you guys. Look how pretty this shade is. This one's beautiful. It is really dark. I don't often use dark shimmers unless I'm going for a really fancy glamorous look, but I think it's a fun shade to have. All in all, a really good palette. I definitely would recommend this one. I think it's a really good complete palette, although it doesn't give you any neutrals, which is just something, again, to be aware of. Let's move on to the Blueberry Muffin palette. So here is a look at the packaging of the inside shades and then the shades swatched on my arm. 
If you are at all into blue eyeshadow, I think you will absolutely love this palette. I'm very picky with the blues that I like to use. I usually like more neutral kind of stilly tone blues. And I've got to say, as beautiful as I think some of these shades are, I will very likely not be using these matte blues on my eyes very often. They're just a little more bold than I like to go. But that said, this has actually been one of the palettes that has surprised me the most. I have loved reaching for this palette, especially for the lid shimmers in here. There are some really spectacularly beautiful lid shimmers in here. Lots of variations on a shell pink, which is probably why I love it so much because that's one of my favorite lid shades to reach for. But I also love some of these mid-tone shimmers. I love some of these deeper shimmers. I love this like steely silver that has almost a green and blue shift. This is such a unique and interesting shade. It's very, very brightening. This is one that I would probably only put on my inner corner or my inner lid unless I'm going for something really bold and bright and intense. But it's a really fun shade and I think it pairs really nicely with the other shades inside here. Love this purple tone right here. It's like a pinkened purple or a mid-tone pink lavender. It's so unique. I really, really love this shade. You guys might know I've been really into matte grays lately. I think this is a beautiful one. I love that you get a basic warm brown. You also get kind of a purple tone brown in here that's really rich and really dark. I love this transition shade. Very peach in tone, but it is so, so pretty on the eyes. This is just a really fun one. And despite the fact that I know there are three or four shades in here that I will likely only use on the rarest of occasions, which by the way is usually something that I shouldn't say annoys me about palettes, but I rarely rave about a palette that has a lot of shades that I know I'm not going to use, but I actually give this one a bit of a pass because I love some of the other shades so much in here, especially when it comes to those lid shimmers. I just think they are stunning. And if you are into blue, if you actually would wear some of these bold blues, I would highly, highly recommend this palette. I think it is so pretty and so much fun. Let's move on to the Chillin' in Chicago palette. So here's a closer look at the packaging of this one. Here's a look at the shades inside and how they look swatched on my arm. This is a really pretty one. There is a little bit of crossover in some of the shades inside here. There's some shades that I wouldn't say are duplicates necessarily, but they're pretty close. I think they perhaps could have been swapped out to give it a little bit more variety. But that said, I think the idea of this palette is to be a little bit more monochromatic. I do want to say though, looking at this palette, I get very warm pink tone vibes. But as I have played with this palette, this actually leans a lot more bronze than it does pink. These shimmers, especially these three, actually I would say even like these four right here, they look somewhat pink or purple in tone, but when you use these on your eyes or swatch them, even on my arm, they have a pretty strong bronze shift to them. So let me just show you guys. You see how golden and bronze these are? I do love a good bronze or golden eye, but if you are not in the mood for a golden eye, you probably won't like this palette at all because any look that I created with this palette leaned very much on the gold side. And that is true even when I went with just more of the pinks. Now I'm not necessarily opposed to that, but gold is not a tone that I wear super often, especially if it's a yellow toned gold. I don't wear that type of a look very often. And so for that reason, probably if I had to rank one in last place, I don't really want to rank these today because I don't feel like I'm quite there yet, but I would likely rank this one as my least favorite of the ones that I've tried out so far, just because so many of the looks that I created with this came out very similar to each other and also very, very gold, even when I wasn't going for that type of a look. So that's just something to keep in mind. It is a fun one. I think it is really pretty. The formulas, as I mentioned with all these palettes are fantastic. They're really great. The mattes are really easy to use very pigmented, very blendable. The shimmers are easy to use, whether you're using a brush or your finger. Just very, very golden and very, very warm. Moving right along, let's talk about the Hanging In Hawaii palette. Now, this is one of the ones that went in and out of my cart as I was getting ready to place my order. This is one that I was on the fence with. I do remember many, many months ago, one of you actually left a comment recommending this specific palette. And I've looked at this palette several times throughout the last year, year and a half, and often thought this one looked a little bit blah or bland or boring, but you guys, this might be one of my very favorites. Now it's not super bold. It's not super colorful. It's not super exciting. You may look at this and see a lot of blah or repetition, but this is one of the ones that I've been reaching for the most for everyday type of looks. I love the looks that come out of this palette. Granted, you're not going to get a lot of variety from this one, but if you like neutral looks, if you are not one to reach for something very bold and you like to just be in that comfortable place of working with neutral tones, kind of some light pinks, maybe to spice things, up or a little bit of like a coral shade and then something basic on the lid, which those are the type of looks that I just wear on an everyday basis the most. So this is the palette that I reach for the most, especially when I'm not wanting to be creative with makeup. If I'm just going to run errands or something, or I just want to throw together a simple look to make myself feel a little bit more put together, this is the palette that I've been reaching for. I've used this one more than any of the others, especially on those days when I'm not trying to use a palette for the sake of getting to know it to do a video. If I am just say, for example, I went to Target last week with my mom 
mom and I needed to do my makeup in the car and this is the palette that I selected to come along with me because I knew it was going to give me a beautiful everyday look. So let's take a closer look at the packaging, at the shades inside, and then of course the shadows swatched on my arm so you guys can see in a little bit better detail what this color story looks like. Now obviously this is not a cool tone palette so if you are only into cool tones, honestly the only cool tone palette in this whole bunch is the blueberry muffin palette. Most of the other ones lean a little bit warm but these are really soft warm tones. Nothing in here is obnoxiously warm. Even these peaches and corals are pretty soft on the eyes. You guys know I love my champagnes and these are perfectly done. They are a little bit similar but there are subtle differences between these. This is like a classic champagne. This one has a little bit more pink in it and this one has a little bit more of a peach shift to it. Really beautiful. Then you get a nice shimmery bronze down here that's not too dark. This is the perfect tone of bronze for me for my preferences for what I like. And then you also get this shimmery rose shade that's really really lovely. So much fun. I am pleasantly surprised by this palette. I think if I had to pick just one based on what I use the very most this would have to be my number one pick. And last but not least let's take a look at the Smitten in Switzerland palette. This is another beautiful one. I've had my eye on this one for quite a while as well. I don't know if it's made it into any official wish list videos but it's one that every time I look at their website it catches my eye. This is a palette that is colorful but is colorful in a way that is very me. There are a lot of softer or more jewel tone colors in here. I love these rosy shades right here. I think they're absolutely stunning. I'm thinking that's what we might do for today's look. Go with some of these rosy shades and then maybe dip into this one or maybe even the blueberry muffin one for our lid shade. We'll see. But let's take a closer look at the packaging of this one, the shades inside, and then all of the shadows swatched on my arm. Really good range in here from light to dark. I like the colors in here. There are a few, I would say the shimmery blue and the shimmery green that I likely won't reach for very often. But other than that, everything else in here is very everyday wearable for me. However, that said, there is one very, very important thing that is missing in this palette. If you know my palette preference as well, you might be able to spot it, but it is a light shimmer. All of the shimmers in here are more mid-tone, and I think that is so sad because they gave you these three mattes right here that are very beautiful, I will grant you that, but they're somewhat similar to each other, and I don't feel like you need each of these shades. I would have loved to see one of these two shades swapped out for the same shade, but in a shimmer formula. I think it would have made this palette so much more versatile. Now, I know not everyone out there feels the need to put a light shimmer on their lid as I seem to, but even if you wanted to add just a little bit of shimmer to your inner corner or to your brow bone, you don't really have the option to do that in here. And for me personally, I'm really sad about that because otherwise this would have definitely been my number one palette. The color story is an absolute 10 for me. I love the match you get inside here. I even love the shimmers that you get. I just wish I had that one light shimmer. You guys know I am a big fan of these. I mean, I wouldn't call this one a green. It's kind of a grayish color. It's a brown toned gray that I think is so beautiful. This green is Oh, stunning. I love it. I love that you get this soft tangerine color. I love that you get a black, you get a basic brown. As I mentioned, these rose tones right here are just beautiful. I just so wish it had that lighter shimmer, but it's still a really fun one. And if you like color that's a little bit more subdued, I think you'll really love this color story and this palette. All right, so now we're going to jump into an eye look. So I really am feeling these rosy pinks today. I'm just kind of in the mood for like a rosy mauve toned eye look. I think we're gonna go with those. I might pop a little bit of this dark brown in my outer corner. I think for my lid, I actually wanna go into the Blueberry Muffin palette because I, as I mentioned, just I love the lid shimmers in here so much. I wanted to show them off for you guys. They are actually quite glittery and there is some variety in the shimmer formulas in this palette. I didn't really find that to be the case with the other ones. They all are pretty much pretty standard shimmers, but there are some really extra sparkly ones inside here that I think are really beautiful. So to start things off, I want to dip into this shade right here. This is the shade Fondue, and I'm gonna run that up above my crease. This is a really soft color. It does have a little bit of like a pink peach undertone to it. I think it's really, really pretty. All right, next we're gonna dip into this shade right here. This is the shade Lucerne. It looks like a kind of cool toned mauve. Oh, so pretty. I'm gonna place this all over the outside half of my eyelid. And then kind of deepen up my actual crease with this shade a little more than halfway in. I'm gonna take a little bit of what's left and run it under the outer part of my lower lash line. As for the makeup I'm wearing on the rest of my face today, I have the 
Thrive Cosmetics CC Cream on today, and I mixed that with my Misha, number 21. I also have the Thrive Cosmetics bronzer on today. I have my Maybelline Master Chrome highlight. I used on my cheeks my Flower Beauty Gel Crush stick in the shade Strawberry Crush. And then in my brows, I used my e.l.f. $2 brow pencil along with my ColourPop Brow Boss Gel. Oh, and my lips today. I'm wearing the Thrive Cosmetics color stick again on my lips today. And then on top of it, I actually have the Ofra Millie lip gloss from the Samantha March collection. Okay, so there we have it. Perfect level of pink. Let's now add a little bit of depth to the outer corner. For that, let's jump over to the Hanging in Hawaii palette. I want to use this purpley brown here in the corner. Really, really pretty shade. Very nice and rich, very purple toned brown. I love a good purple toned brown. Just kind of using what's left or kind of what's in the outer corner and kind of dragging it just lightly along that outer corner of my lower lash line. First, I want to go back to the Smitten in Switzerland palette. I want to take this shade right here. I love this shade. It's kind of a purpley, like rosy taupe. I guess, I don't know, but I think it's really pretty. We're gonna put this on kind of the center to outer part of the lid. This one's not super reflective. It's more of like a satin finish shimmer, but it's really, really pretty. The shade's gorgeous. Okay, and now we're going to jump over to the Blueberry Muffin palette. Oh, so many fun choices in here. I've been most reaching for this shade right here. It's very glittery. The shade's sweet, but it's a little bit more on the gold side. So why don't we reach for this one today? This is the shade Cravings. This is another one that has quite a bit of glitter in it. It's a little bit chunky, a little bit flaky, but it is very nice and pink toned. It has a little bit of silver sparkles in there, and I think it is so, so pretty. So I'm going to place this all over the inner third of my lid. This is gonna go really well with the purple tones kind of in the outer corner. It actually reminds me a little bit of Ladybird by ColourPop. Maybe a little bit more blue sparkle in it than Ladybird has. Then let's take my refer number two brush. We're gonna go back to the Smitten in Switzerland palette. Actually, no, let's jump back to the Hanging in Hawaii palette and I'm gonna take that purpley brown you could use any smudge brush that's kind of this flat shape. I'm just taking a little bit on the tip and we're gonna add just a little bit of depth right to this outer corner. I'm almost drawing a wing with the shadow, doing like a smudgy wing. This is the eye look that I've kind of mastered. So I don't tend to like to jump out of my comfort zone, which is probably all the more reason that I should do a seven looks video to push myself to stop doing the same type of eye look every day or every video. Okay, I am pretty thrilled with that one. I think that looks stunning. Let's jump back to really quickly the Hanging in Hawaii palette. I wanna add just a little bit to the inner corner. I think you could skip it because I think this is bright enough that you don't really need to add anything to your inner corner, but just because we can, let's add a little bit of this shade Hula to my inner corner. And this is the Alter Ego number 11 brush. This is actually a little bit more of a gold tone, but it does have some pink in it too. So hopefully it will go. It's pretty subtle pop. All right. I think that is good. I'm not even going to do liner today. Let's just add a little bit of mascara today. I'm going to use my NARS Climax mascara. I will add a few coats of this, then I will be right back and we'll finish up with a couple final thoughts. All right, you guys, here you have the finished look. I am very thrilled with this makeup look. So just a couple final details on these palettes. I did list the price for you guys and that's their list price. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, BH Cosmetics is a brand that has sales quite often. So I would highly recommend either getting on their email list. I know, is it Shop Tagger that you can do like a notify me when things go on sale? I've never actually done that myself. This video is in no way sponsored by them, but I'm pretty sure that's a thing that you can do. Or you could just check their website periodically and see what kind of sales they are running. So I actually paid different prices for these. These two right here, which I believe are a little bit newer. They're not new by any means, but the Blueberry Muffin and Avocado Toast Palette, I got these both for about 30 or 40% off. So I think I paid around $16 for each of these when I ordered these several weeks ago. I want to say that was mid-February. These three palettes right here, I got for a whopping 60% off. So these were around $10 a piece, which is an absolute steal. I think even if you can get any of these palettes for 25% off or so, I mean, honestly, even 
even at full price, I think these are worth their value. But knowing that you can often find them on sale if you are into saving just a little bit of money, I think it's worth waiting a little bit. I thought about ranking these in today's video. I still feel like I need some more time with these. So if you're curious to see how these end up ranking, I do do halfway through the year a ranking video of all the eyeshadow palettes I've tried out so far. So I will rank these in that video. For now, I feel like I've shared my thoughts in pretty good detail. I think the Hang In in Hawaii is the one I've used the most. So this is definitely one of my favorites. Probably followed by the Blueberry Muffin Palette, despite the fact that there are a few shades in here that I don't use. And then I would say these two right here are huge wins for me as well. This one, as I mentioned, does have something I feel like it's just missing from it, but I do still think it's a fun one. I love the matte pink and shimmer that I used for this eye look today. I think it is absolutely stunning. And I've loved the green looks that come out of this one as well. I also think this is a really fun one. Some of the greens are a little bit more bold than I typically like to go, but I think this is really fun and inspiring palette to play with if you like to play with color. And I have to say for now, my least favorite is the Chicago palette just because it's a little bit too gold for my liking. But that is pretty much it for my final thoughts on the BH Cosmetics palettes that I tried out. Again, I would recommend all the formulas in these. I would really just pick the one that has the color story and finishes that suit you the very most. But hopefully this walkthrough was helpful for you guys. If you are looking to maybe try out one or two of these palettes, hopefully this will help you to make that decision. I would love to know from you guys, if you have these palettes, what do you think of them? If you have a few of them, which one is your favorite? All of that stuff, let us know down in the comments below. That I think could be even more helpful. Hearing more than one person's opinion is always very helpful. So thank you so much for stopping by today. One more reminder, if you are not yet subscribed, please consider doing that before you leave. But that is it for now. I will see all of you in my next video. Bye. Uh, and remember that statement about the wanting to only get two pallets a month? I officially redact that statement. I've clearly failed. <laughs>